Hey, what's up guys? Caleb, back in the shop this week with another video for you. Uh, this week we're going to be working on a Star Trek uh, prop. This is the, um, this is the Mako particle rifle from Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, this is all EVA foam. It's uh, the base's uh, floor mat foam. Uh, the only thing PVC on here is the retractable stock. Uh, it's not retractable on this. Uh, I just made it stationary. It's just going to be a wall, a wall display. Um, and I even put the uh, the rings on here for the uh, shoulder strap. So it's probably probably one of my longer builds. Uh, there's a lot of detail on the sides. There's a lot of little little detail all the way around on both sides it's it's kind of a longer build but anyway if you have the patience for it i uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh stay tuned for more star trek stuff um i'll be working on some more stuff here in the future that I, it's really gonna be really cool i hope you guys like it and uh also let me know if you if you like the the background i seems like every video i'm have a different background. I haven't really picked a good background spot yet, but uh, let me know. Leave comments below if you like the, the build. Uh, let me know if there's something that you are interested in seeing, and uh, maybe I'll make it in the future. And uh, see you guys next week. All right, everybody. So as usual, we're starting off by cutting out the blueprint. Uh, this week, I don't have a template uh, breakdown of all the pieces. This is just one of those builds where there's a lot of detail. So all I do is I use the blueprint and I cut the blueprint out. Uh, I cut every piece of the blueprint out as I go to build up layers. So this is just the base of the gun, the overall shape. Um, I'm putting this onto some floor mat foam. It's that uh, floor mat foam from Harbor Freight. And so then what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off these top detail pieces. These are like the top layer of the gun. So I cut these right off of the blueprint and then I will trace these onto some of that floor mat too. Uh, left and right this template that I the blueprint that I give is uh, the left side so trace it on the left then flip the pattern over and trace the left side too so I ended up cutting out three pieces for the overall uh, base of the gun you can see I cut out two lefts and one right side um, ideally you would want to sand off the texture on the back but I am extremely impatient and uh, it doesn't affect the overall outcome um, you can sand it smooth and you can put some sealer in it to cover up any of the edges that you don't like or if they if they come apart the problem is is that most of the time the glue won't stick onto the back and it'll pull apart and you'll have some seams here and there that you have to replace but I don't know for whatever reason it feels like I would rather take the time to seal it and fill those in after the fact than sitting there with my Dremel and sanding the texture off so once I get those glued together I go through with my knife and then I cut the exact uh, template off. I oversized the pieces of foam so that uh, I can cut the template out perfectly after. This uh, is a lot easier if you have a bandsaw or even a scroll saw. Um, cutting cutting through three layers of floor mat foam with um, your 
exacto knife is pretty tricky you can do it obviously it just uh, takes a little bit of time and it takes a lot of cleanup after so what I do is I just use a uh, rotary tool and I go through and I sand down the seams uh, making sure that they're flush and then I sand everything smooth to get rid of the uh, jagged cut lines just make everything look uh, pretty flat and uh, pretty basically you can see how s that some of those seams have opened up uh, from the mats not being sanded on the back but uh, that's totally up to you if you don't want to deal with that later just quickly sand the edges down the texture on the back right where the glue goes is, is really all you have to do but you can see how much dust foam dust this causes just doing this stuff so you can really uh, see how much sanding off the back all the way around the piece would would make and I just didn't want to deal with it so then after that everything's shaped and cut out I put the template back on and I am just marking where those top pieces go this is so that I can put glue on and have it be exactly where it needs to go also it helps me with knowing exactly where the piece fits so when I glue it on I'm not uh, trying to guess so now I cut those top pieces out the same way I did the bottom these get cut out and then um, I will quickly s use the rotary tool to clean up the edges too uh, not not as much because you can get a lot cleaner of a cut uh, the th with the thinner foam here but just to make sure everything is um, level is really the only reason that I do that So now I take that top blueprint and I cut out the panel piece so that I can mark on here exactly where those uh, panel lines go. So I glue both of these pieces together. I put, I use contact cement so I put the glue on both sides. And I usually do about two layers of contact cement. Uh, what happens is that the the first layer soaks into the foam and then the second layer bonds to the first layer and then stays on the surface so when you glue them together it's uh, pretty much permanent so you can see I use my line that I that I drew on and also I use uh, kind of the top of the gun the shape of the gun to to line up exactly where I feel like it fits the best then you just push it down push it together and it's it's not going anywhere these are the grips um, the texture that goes on the handle grips this is just some two millimeter foam uh, there's one for the front handle one for the back handle and uh, there's one on both sides so this is a uh, left side front and back and a right side front and back and I label everything with a pen just so I uh, can glance at it and and look and see exactly what what handle it goes to and what side it goes to this is the vent detail that goes on the front of the gun this is five millimeter foam for the square uh, base and then it's also five millimeter for these uh, panel uh, vent pieces. They just get cut out and then they get glued on with some super glue. Now 
then I mark on the gun exactly where I want it to go and then I just put some super glue on that and then stick it on the super glue works really good um, it's one of the best super glues I've, I've found it's a bigger bottle and it's cheaper than buying those small bottles and uh, it works really good with foam too it it's very very fast setting and it uh, dries pretty quick obviously that's what fast setting is <laughs> and uh, so what I'm doing here with the exacto knife is I am just scoring some of these panel lines that I drew earlier um, cutting into the foam not super deep but enough to break the surface and then when you hit it with the heat gun what it does is the foam um, uh, compresses it like melts and compresses in on itself all the, all the molecules and uh, in doing that it pulls away from the uh, line that you cut so w what it looks like is it looks like a open panel like detail and uh, it always looks super nice it's really cool watching it happen as you do it so now I'm using the rotary tool and I am sanding the edges of the uh, handle pieces here uh, these have like a 45 degree bevel all the way around um, and since these are two millimeter foam that can be kind of tricky but you can see that I'm using like my my finger to hold the back of right where I'm sanding to hold it in place so it's not flopping all over the place and then these just get glued on with some super glue these really help to add that uh, layered three-dimensional shape you can see in this image here how how those panel lines really really start to look uh, like actual pieces of the gun that are um, uh, manufactured and assembled together and they fit you know perfectly it just brings out a lot more detail so the back of the top piece here that gets a 45 bevel uh, well it's a 45 cut but then I bevel it um, round and it's the the back piece there and then the this part here that uh, goes down to the uh, base of the gun gets beveled to the base of the gun this is a new technique I've never used before I uh, I basically just use the sand uh, sanding drum and I just sand into this piece of foam here and then um, what I do is I cut a square out from where that was and uh, glue it on and that it really looks like a like a rocker switch that's the switch uh, on the gun that's the switch that um, lifts the scope out of the gun So this is the, uh, I guess I will call it the trigger guard. It goes in front of the trigger. This is a piece of uh, 10 millimeter foam. And then the um, detail pieces on the side are two millimeter foam. And uh, I come back to that in a minute. This is like the dial that goes in the middle of the gun. I assume it's the center dial for um, stun and kill, or it might just be a intensity beam setting. I'm not 100% sure. So that piece of 5mm foam there that I just cut a rectangle shape out of. Uh, and then this bottom circle is a piece of 6mm foam and then that gets beveled, the edges get beveled on that and then the piece of two millimeter foam circle gets glued right on top of that and then that uh, rectangle piece goes right in the middle So now with the trigger guard here, this this uh, two millimeter two millimeter detail piece goes on the outside of both sides, uh, and I cut those panel lines out before I glued it on. Um, 
probably an easier thing to do is to use a soldering iron that I will show you that in a minute here uh, when I go to put the panels on the back uh, it probably would be easier to do that uh, the trigger guard also has a piece of five millimeter foam on this um, curve side so all I do is I cut out a piece of foam uh, I stick that on the bottom it overlaps on both sides and it overlaps on the bottom probably an eighth of an inch so I just glue that into place where it looks good and then I trim the top flush and then I put some glue on it and I put it right in the center So this is the actual trigger. This is a piece of two millimeter foam uh, cut into a rectangle and that's just glued on and then this circle piece goes in the middle of that. It's like a button trigger. That detail piece is just made out of two pieces of five millimeter just cut into a rectangle then cut another rectangle and glue on top of that. These uh, circle details um, I'll come back to those in a minute. Uh, this is the bevel line for the top. So I use my knife and I cut the um, the bevel out first just to get rid of all that extra foam so I'm not sanding it and turning it into dust. And then I will go through and I will sand the the top pieces where they are flush to the base of the gun and then from there I will sand down towards my pen line and just rounding that out it's not a it's not a sharp 45 it's more of a beveled 45 this is a piece of six millimeter foam and I sand down both sides of that to make it a curved curved shape then I use my scissors here and I cut out a strips of two millimeter foam. These are the rings that go on this piece. Uh, so I start with the front one. It's the widest piece, the widest ring. And then from there, what I do is I cut out more strips and I will put the first one here and then gradually every time I will cut another strip that's thinner. Uh, these get shorter not shorter, they get narrower towards the trigger. So they start widening until they get narrow. And then I just put some glue on that. I glue that into place. This is a piece that goes on the back of the um, grip. Just a piece of 10 millimeter and a piece of 5 millimeter. Uh, marked how thick the gun is and I just made like a U uh, horseshoe shape. This is a detail piece for the front of the gun. It goes in front of that cylinder with the rings on that we just cut. Um, cut this square off of the blueprint and then I round the corners off to make it look like a cylinder. And then just che checking where it fits, gluing that in. This is just a square piece of floor mat foam. This goes on the front. This goes, uh, I put the texture side down because I'll be sanding it off. This is a round cylinder piece. So what I'm doing is I am using my rotary tool to sand the corners and then sand the top texture off and then continue to sand and curve it into a cylinder. This goes in front of that cylinder piece. It's, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it, it does or what it is. I assume this mechanism is like a secondary fire because it looks like another barrel on the bottom. So I cut this piece out of three pieces of 10 millimeter and a piece of five millimeter glued together. Then I go through and I shape it. I put these uh, groove detail pieces in both sides uh, 
and then these are the top uh, detail pieces. These are like the iron iron sights. This is the round one. It goes uh, on the top of the scope part. I believe this is two pieces of six millimeter foam. I cut the shape out and then I sand the top uh, on both sides to make it a uh, form it into a triangular uh, shape. And this goes on the top. The panel lines that you cut in is for the uh, supposed to be like where the scope is. So this goes right past the panel detail there. And then the front piece goes almost right into the front. It kind of lines up with the uh, side pieces there. This is some 4 millimeter foam cut into a strip. This gets glued on the back and it gets glued uh, all the way around the back to the other side. So I glue it there. I check where I want it to be and then I just cut the excess off. These are the uh, square pieces that go on the back of the stock. These are just three pieces of 10 millimeter foam glued together uh, and then cut to the, uh, the right height. And then the top corners get uh, beveled. So just like before, I take my knife and I cut a 45 off of those first before I sand them. The same piece that goes to the back of the gun uh, has its shape to the back of the gun so what I'm doing here is I'm just roughly cutting that shape out uh, and then I will use the rotary tool to sand that smooth sand it more to shape this kind of depends on how the back of your gun is shaped it's kind of supposed to be square uh, I think I sanded mine a little bit more round. So what I did is I just sand, you know, and then when I get to the point where I think it looks good, I put it up to the gun, make sure it fits properly, and if it doesn't, you just sand a little bit more. Now I sand the bevels on the top. So now these both just get super glued into place. You can see just how fast that super glue uh, sets up. So it's really nice for doing smaller detail pieces. You don't have to put contact cement on both sides. And wait for it to dry. This back piece goes uh, almost to the back of the gun. It's probably a fourth of an inch away from the the back. And, uh, so this piece of uh, PEX PVC pipe. Uh, not exactly sure what size it is, but what I'm doing is I'm using my knife and I'm sharpening the inside, just kind of carving away at the inside to make it uh, sharp. And then what I do is I will use that to push against that piece and turn it, twist it back and forth, and it will actually cut through your foam um, in a perfect sphere. I use this technique a lot for, for getting circles and um, uh, details in different sizes based on the size of the pipe that you have. So you can see how I just keep pushing it through until it's into the gun. And then you pull it out and you 
remove that chunk of foam. So now on the bottom, I try to mark exactly where I want that to go, and I just uh, push it in there to get a detail piece, and then I just cut that circle away with the uh, knife. This is the uh, butt stock piece that goes into your shoulder. Uh, this is two pieces of 10 millimeter and a piece of 5 millimeter. Uh, cut them out, glue them together, and then sand it flush. Make sure everything is level. And uh, be, make sure you hold on to your piece so it doesn't fly and hit you in the face like it just did. Uh, so then you sand front and the back, make sure they're level, and then I give it a quick um, bevel on the sides. Now I put the two pieces of pipe in the gun. I forgot exactly where I want this to go. Then I will push that in to that piece of foam and mark exactly where it goes. And I'll mark it with a pen. And then I use that same technique just to uh, create a hole that the tubes will fit into. This is a front piece that goes on the front of the gun. It's a piece of two millimeter foam cut into a uh, rectangle. You can see how I'm kind of using my fingers to shape it and curve it into a uh, curved piece. And then I will check to see exactly the fitting, where I want it, how long it needs to be. So then on the front of that piece goes this thin strip of two millimeter foam. cut the excess off of the rectangle and then I'll cut the excess off of that that strip and then when I go to glue this on I glue on one side first so you can glue that in flush to that circular piece and right to where you want it then you can just add some more glue on the other side and glue that on exactly where you want it to be now this top detail vent piece was the part that I was not looking forward to it's the guns pretty much done and then the idea of cutting into it was uh, not a fun thought but I just cut down to my lines on the top with my long blade and then with my short blade I cut in the sides and once you cut in the sides it it will it will cut away and uh, pull apart from itself this will get painted too so you won't you won't see if it's uh, kinda ripped up in there but as long as the edges look smooth and the top looks smooth you'll never you'll never notice it this is some modeling foam it's basically uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, foam clay. This is Michael's brand. I've uh, been using this stuff for a while. I really like the way that it works and, and how it feels to work with. It, it's, it's an air dry foam clay. And when it dries, it has the same uh, flexible consistency as foam. These go on the top of that buttstock piece, they're just triangles. Um, using some water here with a brush to just brush on some water this stuff sticks to foam a lot better if it has a um, water base underneath and you can use water on your fingers to um, smooth it out and um, prolong the working time with it a little bit what I'm doing here is I'm just covering up some gaps and some cuts in the foam there where I sanded it and I wasn't really happy with the way it looked. You can see how I'm smoothing it out with my thumb there with a little bit of water.
So now what I'm doing is with the soldering iron, I have this uh, detail, not detail, but this piece on the front of the soldering iron that looks kind of like a leaf, leaf petal. And I'm using my ruler to put exactly where um, these panel lines are. And I just uh, lightly follow the piece here. It's really easy to overdo this and over burn and melt where where you want these to go so I just kind of use a light hand to just follow the line there and then I do the same on the back of those um, stock pieces there they, they have two grooves on the side on both sides so like I was saying earlier with that trigger piece you can totally use this technique to put in those detail lines on that uh, trigger guard so that's the gun all together now what I'm doing is I'm putting on a layer of Plasti Dip uh, I put two coats on the first coat on I put on thin coat just trying to make sure I get every uh, every bit of the gun and then the second coat I put on a little bit thicker and that will actually bond the piece underneath uh, the Plasti Dip underneath this is just some gloss black paint. I only had uh, this high performance enamel paint, which is a little overkill, but it looks good. And uh, like I said, that was all I had, so I used it. Now I'm going through and painting. This is some uh, gray, it's just out of the bottle. It is. It is a rainy day gray, that's what it's called. I ended up putting like three to four coats of this paint on. That's why I painted the gun that gray plastic dip base because I knew that uh, it would be really hard to cover over black plastic dip. So this was a little bit easier, but still, uh, still took a lot of coats. You can see here that I'm, uh, I'm like talking on my, I was live streaming this on my Instagram page. Um, so make sure you guys check out my Instagram. I post a lot of pictures and stuff that I'm working on there and, uh, I'm going to start live streaming a little bit more. It's, it's really fun to do. I haven't done it a lot. So this is just in black, same black acrylic paint that I am always using. And uh, put this all on the top and remaining pieces. Uh, use a more detailed brush to get into the corners and all that fun stuff. It took me a while. I didn't want to film all of it because it just it's just monotonous and tedious. And you guys know. It's just you paint it. You paint all the all the detail pieces, and you paint in all the grooves and cracks, and all that kind of all that fun stuff. It can be tedious and long, but if you just have patience, a little bit of patience, and a steady hand, it should go by pretty good. And I don't have patience, so that should tell you something. So now I'm putting the stock in the back. can see the difference between the gloss black and just the regular black which I like um, I do end up spraying a clear coat on the overall gun to to uh, give it a little bit of shine it's not as shiny as that black but it it looks good the contrast actually looks good now I'm using some of this aluminum wire cutting it into two pieces then I use my pliers and I grip it and just start curving as I go down the, the piece. Do this until I get a good circular shape that I like until the two pieces uh, meet up with each other. Then I pull them back open and I feed them through. These are like the um, the strap uh, holders for like this, the shoulder strap for the gun. 
I just thought it'd be a nice little touch to put these on, put them, make make them out of real metal. So that's it, guys. That is the particle rifle from Star Trek Enterprise. Hope you guys liked it.